Hello, I'm Pam Jardine. In this episode, we learn why being prepared is paramount. Meet Kirkland's new police chief and see how neighborhoods are contributing to their safety on and near our city streets. All in this edition of Currently Kirkland. Emergency preparedness is very important for Kirkland residents, businesses, and visitors. In the case of an earthquake, disaster can strike at a moment's notice. Emergency preparedness is very important for Kirkland residents, businesses, and visitors. In the case of an earthquake, disaster can strike at a moment's notice. Patty Jean Hooper, manager of Kirkland's Office of Emergency Management, surveys the construction of Kirkland's new Emergency Operations Center. She is constantly preparing Kirkland for the next big one. This earthquake will cause all sorts of problems from the initial shaking, which will last about four minutes, maybe longer, to a tsunami that will take care of our shores. At the same time, John Vidale and Bill Steele are hard at work doing the same at the Pacific Northwest Seismology Network Lab at the University of Washington. The last earthquake uh, up here that was huge was uh, the year 1700. We can tell because they saw the waves uh, over in Japan and carefully recorded those. Uh, and that earthquake involved the whole boundary between the Juan de Fuca and the North American plate moving all the way from Canada down into California. Starting on June 7th, the Pacific Northwest will face one of its most complex disaster scenarios. The FEMA-led exercise will enact a large magnitude earthquake scenario that will affect communities from Oregon to Alaska. There are some of us that have kind of reviewed uh, the general document that looks at the impacts on hospital buildings, on bridges, on roadways. But there's going to be a group of exercise masters, if you will, or people that are injecting things that happen in local jurisdictions and local counties. It is a four-day functional exercise where we all pretend that there's a big disaster that's happened and we do response operations according to delivering essential services to the impacted community in Kirkland. The goal of the exercise is to prepare us for the effects of a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. The Cascadia subduction zone is basically a boundary between two big tectonic plates that runs along the Pacific Northwest coast. Uh, it is where the North American plate on the east collides with the Juan de Fuca plate, which is uh, offshore and also colliding and then sinking underneath the North American plate. So there's a boundary between these two tectonic plates that comes to the surface with a trench offshore, and it's a boundary that dips kind of under our region, and right here in the Puget Sound, it's about 30 miles under our feet. Our guesses about what's coming haven't really changed for 10 or 20 years, but what we have seen is the, the destruction from similar earthquakes elsewhere in the world. So if you are on a shoreline, a large wave from the ocean will come in, and if you live around Lake Washington or Lake Sammamish or other lakes, you'll have a sash take place. And a sash is if you've ever filled a cup of water and when you walk with it, it sloshes back and forth, uh, that will happen to our lake. So it's important that we know we live in an earthquake zone, we live in a sash zone, um, we live in 700 miles worth of territory that could be impacted by large tsunamis, so it's time to be prepared. Saving lives is always a priority but there's also concern for the impact on the environment and infrastructure. The mitigation means trying to you know, reduce the damage of the coming earthquakes and volcanic activity. And so for that, we do a lot of things. You know, one is working with the state to try to make sure you know, the state laws are appropriate and with the cities to make sure the building codes are, are accurate. And you know, we work with the USGS to make the hazard maps that are used around the country again, to guide the building. Uh, and when there's an earthquake, um, we work with the emergency managers to keep them informed about what's happening and what's likely to happen next. City of Kirkland staff will be on duty in the Emergency Operations Center for 32 hours that week. They will respond to the effects of a disaster scenario outlined in 600 lines of script. Many other Washington and Oregon-based agencies will simultaneously take part in the event. 
Well, one of the things that we do for every event is have something called a hot wash. And that's emergency management talk for everything comes out in hot water. So we sit down on Friday afternoon as, a, as city employees and we say what went well and where are gaps in our planning. On Saturday, June 12th, following the week-long exercise, the Kirkland community is invited to participate in an emergency exercise of their own. If you have an interest in seeing how CERT works, how the amateur radio people um, interact and talk to one another, North Shore Utilities is going to be connecting up to one of the fire hydrants and showing us how to disperse drinking water uh, to the public. The National Guard is going to be coming in with an echelon of about 30 personnel and six Humvees and a helicopter. We will be landing the helicopter in public space, so yes, you can certainly watch that. For more information about Cascadia Rising, Kirkland Office of Emergency Management, or the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network, go to the websites on your screen. Mike Connor for Currently Kirkland. Chief Sherry Harris, Kirkland's new police chief, was sworn in on April 16, 2016 at a ceremony at the Kirkland Justice Center. I, Sherry M. Harris, I, Sherry M. Harris, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the laws of the state of Washington, and the laws of the state of Washington, and that I will perform the duties of the Office of Chief of Police, that I will perform the duties of the Office of Chief of Police, of the Kirkland Police Department to the best of my ability, of the Kirkland Police Department to the best of my abilities. Congratulations. Chief Harris oversees 99 sworn and 36 support personnel in the Police Department's Administrative, Operations, and Professional Standards Divisions. Previously, Harris served as the Operations Captain for the Kirkland Police Department, where she directed and managed all uniformed personnel, including patrol, the traffic unit, K-9, the Special Response Team, SWAT, Crisis Negotiations Team, and Parking Enforcement Officers. Sherry Harris is the real deal, and she truly leads by example. She is collaborative, decisive, willing to address difficult issues, and is committed to the well-being of the men and women of this police department and the service they provide to this great community. We believe in her leadership, her dedication, and the innovation she brings. We stand ready and committed to follow her as our new chief. Chief Harris was chosen through a national selection process that included interview panels with key city and police department staff, police chiefs from Bothell and Mercer Island, the city council, and the community. During the ceremony, city manager Kurt Triplett recounted a recent experience with Chief Harris at the Iman Center. I looked down the tables and I saw Sherry sitting with a group of women who are from all over the world. They're from Pakistan, they're from India. And she had chosen to honor their traditions, and she was wearing a scarf, which most women in the center were, but not all Western women were doing. And I saw them in deep conversation, and I could just tell you I was really proud because I could see that at that moment, they saw Sherry as their police chief. Words cannot express the pride that I feel standing before you today as the chief of police of the Kirkland Police Department. I also commit myself today to do all I can to ensure that those who live, work, and play in Kirkland are safe. At the ceremony, Chief Harris received her chief badge. When a police officer takes his or her oath for office, they are then given a badge and told that many good men and women have given their life in service to what the badge represents. They are told that the badge must always feel heavy as it bears not power but responsibility, and they are being entrusted with it. It is my privilege to be present today as Chief Harris accepts your badge and in doing so commit yourself to the men and women of the Kirkland Police Department and the service to the Kirkland community. Harris is a member of the International Association of Chiefs of Police, the Washington Sheriff and Police Chiefs Association's Accreditation Committee, and is an accreditation assessor. She has a bachelor's degree in social sciences from Washington State University, has attained executive level certification through the Washington Criminal Justice Training Commission, and is a graduate of the FBI National Academy in Quantico, Virginia, and Northwest University's Center for Public Safety School of Police Staff and Command.
you may have noticed some new and improved crosswalks, sidewalks, and trails around town. In 2014, the Kirkland City Council authorized the Neighborhood Safety Program to re-energize neighborhood associations to work collaboratively in identifying, prioritizing, and addressing pedestrian and bicycle safety issues in Kirkland neighborhoods. The top priority project for 2016 was the Northeast 68th Street Stairs. And um, that is a unique project because it actually brings four neighborhoods together. It's the corner of four neighborhoods. Um, that's the Everest, Lakeview, um, Central Houghton, and Moss Bay neighborhoods. And it, it um, establishes a connection to the Cross Kirkland Corridor. When we first built the corridor, you can see the rocks that were there and the brambles. People used to scale these rocks and climb to the Cross Kirkland Corridor. And now it's beautiful concrete stairs. Um, it's right on 68th Street. It's across the street from Lakeview Elementary School, so kids walk to school here. The busy 68th Street um, is hard for kids to cross um, when cars are coming and going to school. So they can actually climb these stairs and go up and over 68th Street and then enter the school from the north side of the school near Google, away from traffic altogether. The second project is on Kirkland Ave, and, and it's at an intersection, a really busy intersection, a kind of crazy intersection at 6th and Kirkland Ave. Um, there were sidewalks on the east end of Kirkland Ave, but they end before you get to 6th Street and people were walking in the street to get connected up to 6th Street, which is just very close to our downtown. And it connects to the Cross Curtain Corridor on the east end. So what we did is we continued the sidewalk that was there on the north side all the way out to 6th Street and then uh, put in a crosswalk so that people from the south side could go to the north side to walk on a sidewalk if they were headed east. Projects were really supported by the community. There were a few people that live along Kirkland Ave that um, participated in the design. Um, they even, there was one property owner that contributed funding to the sidewalk there to make this happen because it was getting over budget with all the concrete work that we did. Uh, they're thrilled to have it done. And of course, um, 68th Street, this is one that we get applauded at neighborhood meetings when we say they're done. Uh, people are using these every day. In fact, when I was taking this picture, this couple stopped and they didn't know who I was, but they started going on and, aren't these great? Man, we're so glad these are open now. The program is funded by the voter-approved 2012 Streets Levy and City Council's Walkable Kirkland Initiative. Each year, there's a total of $350,000 available for citywide projects under $50,000. The 2015 funded projects are now complete. These 11 projects include rapid flashing beacons at crosswalks, radar speed signs, connections to the Cross Kirkland Corridor, and crosswalk striping and lighting. The 2016 funded projects will be announced in June. So we have an interactive map online that you can go to and we'll put up a link. Um, you can go, it's really important to get your ideas in that mapping system because that's the system we use with the neighborhood associations to prioritize and pick their top priority projects. Um, so we give them, um, every fall we'll give the neighborhood associations a list of all the suggestions that come in through that map. And then they can add to it at their meeting, so participate with your neighborhood association. Do you have a pedestrian or bicycle safety project you would like to see complete? Applicable projects fall into the following categories. Bicycle facility, such as bike lanes or trails. Crosswalks, such as new crosswalks, improved crosswalk ramps, pedestrian refuge safety islands at crosswalks, and rapid flashing beacons. Intersection improvement, such as signage, parking, and pedestrian bump outs. Traffic calming, such as traffic islands, speed cushions, signage, and radar signs. Walkway slash sidewalk and trails, such as gravel trail, steps, curbs, traffic delineators, and sidewalks. Street lights, such as improvement on existing utility poles or installing a new light pole. Improvements are restricted to city property, including streets, parks, community facilities, and the Cross Kirkland Corridor. Visit www.kirklandwa.gov and search Neighborhood Safety Program to learn how to suggest a project and work with your neighborhood association to submit the Neighborhood Safety Program project application for 2017 projects. Thank you for watching our show. Currently Kirkland can be in the palm of your hand. Subscribe to Kirkland Television on YouTube. 
We air on KGov and KLife. Send us your news tips, story ideas, and suggestions to KirklandTV at kirklandwa.gov. Mm -hmm.